I studied in a very alternative school. We, we had no exams, no textbook, uh, no uh, grades. And I went, I, I spent 10 years in this school. And uh, it was shocking when I went to high school in a more kind of traditional school and because I really enjoyed learning and it was just a natural thing. And then it, it became this thing that you do for, for something else. Yeah, I, I didn't understand why, why would you do that to people? It's uh, Paulo Blickstein. I'm an assistant professor at Stanford University at the School of Education and with a courtesy appointment in computer science. And I direct uh, the Transformative Learning Technologies Lab at Stanford. There are a lot of prototyping machines that used to be very expensive. So examples of those machines are laser cutters, 3D printers, uh, and a lot of robotics. And those machines suddenly became very affordable. People from other countries started to uh, get interested in in this having their own fab lab, which is you know of course stands for fabrication laboratory, and and the movement started to grow kind of geometrically. Uh, this project that I started called Fab Lab at School is a, a variant of the original Fab Lab project. Well, you know why not bring though that this amazing lab to schools. And it's the same idea, you know, you can't really teach uh, sports if you don't have a gym in a school. You can't teach people how to swim if you don't have a swimming pool. And a classroom is a terrible place to teach science. Science and engineering are disciplines where you have to make, you have to build things. You have to make science to learn science. There's no way to learn science just listening to a person talk. The Castellet uh, team is very excited about doing a radical experiment, uh, trying out something new that was never tried before, and and I think that's that's very exciting. Castilleja has is a six to twelve grade school. We will be able to track students from sixth grade all the way to twelfth grade, and and really for the first time have a clear picture of the impact of doing those kinds of activities, not in as a week-long after-school program, but uh, over six years. So, uh, for example, what happens when you look around you and you see all these machines and all these new technologies, do you feel like you can be an active participant in this world, that you can disassemble something and assemble it again, or that you can improve something around you, or do you feel like we a lot of us feel today. I think parents and schools and principals and a lot of people, they are really understanding that, especially for science and mathematics, we have to give students far more hands-on experience than what we're giving. And if you look at the history of science and mathematics education, you see that we actually you know, uh, decades ago, uh, we had a lot more of that, a lot more science labs, a lot more uh, shop class in schools. There are some high school students that come into the shop, but there's no formal or formalized wood shop class for the high school students. So it's adult school, we use it in the evenings. I don't know how long it's been that way, but it's been that way since I've been here especially with the digital age where everything is on a computer screen it's you can see it but it's not tangible here's something at the end you can put your hands on rub your hands over it feels good it looks good um, there's a solidity to the final product that i think a lot of the students here relate to that feels like it gives them something more than they get out of their daily jobs and whatever else they might do well, I mean, Palo Alto, I mean, they, they want, their focus is co college, you know, and so the, mm -hmm. all the vocational programs around here are cut down. Yeah, I think the typical high school student here at Pali is more interested in what's going to get them to cross the street to Stanford. You know, it's, it's a cliche to say that education is not motivating and that kids are 
bored in classrooms. What makes it more perverse is that the rich kids, they know that school is just a means to an end. Even if it's completely boring, they go through the motions because they will get into college and they know that they will you know, have a, a good life uh, in the future. But for the low-income kids, they have a very different perspective. They are living, you know, day by day. They are not necessarily sure that they will get into college. Uh, they might not even want to get into college. If school is not interesting and motivating for those lo low-income kids, uh, they have no reason to be there, and they just drop out. And it's it's profoundly unjust that uh, our system, because it's it's made to be a kind of bureaucratic and standardized and all of that, uh, it actually just disproportionately affects those low-income kids.